thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. And, and thanks for those kind words. It's uh, just want to thank you all for taking time out of your families, your practice and uh, whatever you might be doing. And, you know, these are incredible times in which we live in today and, and uh, hope you and your families, wherever you are, wherever you may be watching this presentation this evening, um, are staying safe. So um, when Mr. Byerly contacted Dr. Ale uh, Mc McAllister and myself, um, really wanted to talk about case studies in the foot and ankle arena. I know that uh, this is a new arena for them to get into and it's unexplored. However, it is an incredibly emerging uh, specialty. And, you know, like any other bone graft, I, I was skeptical. Uh, I wanted to be proven. Uh, I don't know how many times uh, I've had bone graft go in and bone graft go out. If you all know what I mean, you squeeze it and it comes out. And it's very disappointing. The patient freaks out. Um, and I was very skeptical. Um, however, I have not had this experience uh, with this product. Uh, and really, if I could stress one thing this evening is that it's a product that you want to use on your patients if you think that they're smokers, because they all lie, okay? If you think that they're diabetic, if you think that there's something that is going to prevent you from getting and healing what you want to be and where you want to end with the patient. And so in a nutshell, you know, the three cases that I have this evening, and I'd like to just jump into them, is, is cases that, number one, are number failure. Or number two, patients that I think are not going to heal. So we can go back one slide there real fast. I'm, I'm sorry, Paul. Yeah. So 65-year-old smoking female, collapsing pesbano valgus deformity, the aquinas, hammer deformity, right foot. You know, the standard attempt to orthotics, the bracing, steroid. Um, second opinion, I get a lot of those. Uh, and, I, you know, I tell patients, hey, this is what it is. This is what I would do. Um, and if you want to come back, great. I don't steal patients. So she presented when I opened the door. She goes, oh, yeah. And so, you know, I'm vertically challenged. I'm very short. I'm not very short, but yeah, I'm pretty short. <laughs> okay. And she's like, when's the doctor coming in? I'm like, well, height has nothing to do with my capabilities doing your surgery. I, you know, I have to lower the table. Okay. I get it. Right. Okay. So she's like, okay. So it's one of those type of patients. So I'm like, okay, brace yourself. Right. She's like, I'm tired of monkeying around. I've seen a couple other people. This is what they want to do. What can you do? And I'm like, okay, Hey, I like it. So this type of conversation is, we all have had these in these type of patients. So she adopted for surgical, surgical correction after redoing everything she's done. Ankle x-rays are really negative for any de type of deformity. And so we can go to the next slide and see really where her deformity, well, TN, okay. Not too bad. You know, the, the bunion itself on the right-hand picture is, is kind of, you know, okay. But her real problem was that, that the hammer toe and, the, and the, the real pain along the TN joint. So next slide, please. So we decided to do coots uh, with the TN joint and uh, MIS bunion with an Aiken and the hammer, fuse that hammer toe. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, I was able to actually take some of the graft, um, obviously utilize it uh, within the TN joint there. Um, and I use it as a little bit of a spackle also on the MIS bunion too as well. Um, it, once I get good fusion across that area, you know, it, it, it's adjunctive. Okay, and, and I look at these the different types of hardware that are out there on the market, and there's a multitude that are out there, um, but there's not 100% really, you're, okay, I'm, I got a little bit of a deficit, deficit there, what am I going to do, okay? So I'll utilize it, I'll put it in, then I'll put my fixation in, and then I'll really, really cramp that fix, fixation down to get good fusion across that osteotomy site or that fusion site. Next slide, please. You can see with the red arrow, because, you know, not that you can see that the TN <laughs> for all of you out there, but you can see that and this is actually at four weeks. And <clears throat> I'm glad that you introduced some of the background information, Paul, regarding how effective in 14 days that we're really actually starting to see this. This is four weeks. OK, um, I have the patient walking. I'm a big believer in getting patients walking as soon as possible. That's why I'm going to use everything that I can to actually get these patients back sooner. Uh, you know, too many times I've had these patients come in that got a little bit of, you know, calf pain. Well, you know, too many times DVTs are, are not diagnosed and, and can be catastrophic, obviously. So I get patients walking. If I can use something that's going to fuse it faster, and here you see in four weeks, you can also already see the consolidation across the TN joint there too as well. Uh, for any residents that are out there, you know, the most common place that you're going to have a non-union is laterally on that TN joint. Um, so make sure you guys identify that and get over there and put some graft over there as well. Uh, you can see the lateral now that, you know, that lateral looks much more improved. Uh, I prefer to use two screws in the, in the calcaneus for no rotational 
problems and uh, this patient's walking. Uh, next slide, please. Case number two, uh, smoking, diabetic. You can see that there's a uh, pattern forming here, you guys. And really that's, I'm gonna utilize something that's adjunctive, okay? This is the guy that uh, came to me, uh, had pre two previous surgeries, symptomatic hardware, outside institutions presented to me. Uh, actually, I should, should say he was scheduled at an outside institution other than the previous two, came to me and said, what do you got, okay? And um, anytime that you hear this in that line that says he wants the hardware, and I was like, oh, okay, you want the hardware to show your friends the fractured hardware? He goes, no, I've already have an attorney and he wants to see the hardware. So I said, well, I'm going to tell you this right now on the front end, I, uh, I'm not going down that route. I go, I'll fix this. But if you want me to do anything like that, I, I'm not going to do that. I, I believe in karma and I believe that anything can happen in surgery. So I'm going to stack the deck as best as I can to make sure that you fuse. And he's like, okay, that's fair enough. Smoker, he's on oxygen. I just saw him this week for some final x-rays. Not the best um, candidate, not the most com non, uh, compliant candidate. We all have these patients in our um, our offices. So he came in, he wants to, of course, refuse the joint. Uh, he also wants to fix the second and third uh, digits and hammer toe as well. Next slide, please. So here's the preoperative images. Uh, put the red arrow there. So you guys can't see the fractured hardware. Obviously you can. Uh, he was told by a surgeon that, hmm, I, I've never seen this happen before. And I'm, I'm like, well, then, then that surgeon doesn't do a lot of surgery, right? So Hardware's fractured, you know, he wants the hardware postoperatively, fine, that's okay. So looking at this, okay, we've got a smoker, uh, he's slightly, slightly overweight, which we all are. It, uh, he's a diabetic, his A1C was about seven, okay, we'll, we'll take it. Uh, Non-compliant, walked all over his cast, okay, fine, knock yourself out. I'm gonna use something that is actually gonna stack the cards, like I said, in my favor to fuse him, because he's really not the most pleasant patient in the world, but he needs help and he's tired of getting you know, uh, inferior care and, and having this hardware break. Next slide, please. So medial post-op, um, definitely bone graft worthy because of his, basically his, uh, you know, protoplasm. And you can see though, I mean, put a longer plate in there. Uh, if he breaks that plate, I'll be shocked. But what I most importantly want to stress is if he breaks through there, it's not going to happen on my shift. All right. And so we're going to pack that. We're going to utilize some bone graft itself. I'm going to utilize anything that I can. And you can see the lateral there. We've got a pretty good uh, compression across the osteotomy site there, or excuse me, the fusion site. Next slide, please. Four weeks. He's been walking on it. You know, I put him in a cam walker boot at two weeks uh, because he just walked and destroyed the cast. Um, you know, he lives by himself, uh, sits in, in his recliner and watches TV all time and, and drinks his uh, two bottles of Mountain Dew a day. So, um, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, let's use something that's going to stack it for us. So you can see there's fusion across there. He's happy as a clam. Fusion is not broken. Um, and, uh, just saw him for, I think his 12 week appointment this week. So he's completely fine. Next slide, please. All right. So case number three, um, previous surgery on the contralateral side by an outside institution, uh, presented to me saying, I, you know, I just don't heal well. And you love to hear that, okay? And this lady's 58 years old. She smokes occasionally, okay? So how do you know when smokers are lying? Their lips are moving, right? I mean, I don't know how many times I've talked to these patients and they say, well, how many cigarettes do you smoke? What inevitably they say? Three, right? They always say three. I don't know if there's, you know, like the Surgeon General warning on the side. They're looking at it and go, oh, Surgeon General says three. If a doctor asks you, say three cigarettes, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. No, that's not necessarily the case. So you walk in, you open the door, and I'm sure Dr. McAllister can attest to this as you as well. You you smell the waft of the cigarette coming out of there, right? And you're like, wow, is that Chanel or is that Marlboro, right? And so you're like, okay, you come in, you ask him how many cigarettes you smoke. I smoke three a day. Okay, well, you're lying, right? Instantly, I'm thinking if we're having surgery, this is going to be hiss, osteomyelitis, you know, <laughs> You go down the worst path, right? So I'm going to utilize something. And I'm straight up forward with them. I say, listen, due to this factor, this factor, this factor, I have to use adjunctive therapy to make sure we have the optimal uh, fusion across. And patients get that, okay? Prelapse, normal limits. I, you know, I get some prelabs on these patients that I feel as though they're poor surgical candidates in terms of healing. And um, she had a T infusion on the other side uh, that took forever to fuse. 
Uh, and she wanted the same procedure on, on the left side. So next slide, please. So you can see here, not too bad. You know, there's some sclerosis got that, that navicular looks kind of whitish a little bit there, okay? She's got a little fall, she's got a little cyst there, okay? Not too bad. And, and quite honestly, I tried orthotics, I tried injections, I tried NSAIDs, I tried bracing. Nothing seemed to be satisfactory for her. So I was like, okay, well, we got to go down this route. So next slide, please. So isolated TN fusion. This is immediate post-op. I apologize about the quality of our x-rays. Um, uh, x-ray group is, is not so hot in terms of trying to get it, but with the cast, but you can see, you know, use a plate and screws and staple on there and it, pretty good fusion across there. Next slide. In four weeks, she's walking on it, okay? You can see there's good consolidation across there. I haven't seen her back yet. This is a recent uh, film here too. So um, she's walking on it, she's happy. Um, and you know anything that I can do. And if one thing that I can stress throughout all presentations, and I'm sure Dr. McAllister's got some great examples too as well, is utilize something that is going to be the best for those patients to get these things healed. Um, you know, it, it's, it's funny how these patients seem to want to almost do things to jeopardize a good result. Uh, and that's why I tell patients whoever are coming in for a pint of skin or, or a pound of skin, I say, listen, anything can happen in surgery. So I'm going to utilize something. And that's the one thing that, that I will not go back to any type of bone graft. Um, number one, now it's never spit out. Number two, the, the uh, handleability, I know that's not a word, but I'm going to say it tonight. It's very easy to handle. In fact, I had a couple students from local colleges I were able to observe and I shot some in their hands and I'm like, wow, this this feels pretty cool, right? That's, how, that's what, you know, students say. But I had to give them opportunity to feel that. It probably cost the patient $700, but I'm just kidding. But um, one of those things where it's so easy to use, I utilize that as a backfill. I utilize the primary fusion. I'll squirt it within the joint uh, surfaces themselves. It's just very easy to use. And I think it's not going to gum up on you when you try to put it in there. And it's the applicator is very, very easy to use and squirts right in the area. So um, I know you probably have some questions regarding my case studies, but uh, at this point, you know, I'll turn it over to Dr. McAllister and, and, and I'm sure he's got some great cases too as well. And um, I want to thank uh, Paul for you inviting me uh, this evening and, and I'll stick around after McAllister if there's any other questions. So thank you, Dr. Geiger. Appreciate it. And no problem. Um, there's my family. Oh, this is why we get up in the morning, you guys. And this is what it's all about. What a nice looking family you got. Thanks. Um, Okay, uh, thank you again. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Jeffrey McAllister. Dr. McAllister is the founder C and CEO of the Phoenix Foot and Ankle Institute in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, previously, um, he worked for CORE at CORE in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, was the co-director of the Foot and Ankle Fellowship there. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, McAllister got his uh, doctorate in podiatric medicine from Temple University in Philadelphia and um, served as a chief resident under Dr. Steinberg, Adinger, and Kim at uh, the Limb Salvage Service at Georgetown University Hospital in Washington, D.C., followed by a, a, a chief being chief of uh, podiatric surgical resident at Innova Podiatric Surge Surgery Residency Program in Falls Church, Virginia for rear foot and ankle surgical re reconstruction. Um, in addition, uh, doc Dr. McAllister did an advanced uh, fellowship in orthopedic foot and ankle under doctors Heyer, uh, Burlett, uh, Philbin, and Lee in uh, Westerville, Ohio. Uh, Dr. McAllister also has uh, published uh, been, been author of uh, numerous peer-reviewed publications, um, written numerous uh, textbook chapters that are published, and also uh, has done a number of studies and continues to do studies to advance uh, his chosen profession, which is foot and ankle surgery. So I'd like to turn it over to Dr. McAllister now for his presentation. <laughs> 